Okay, I'm wanting to show you how to make a mesh lace stitch poncho. Okay, and as you can see, it's very pretty. And it's actually just a four row set. Okay, and it's really not bad. Um, I do a variation down here where it's every other stitch to make it a little larger. And then I do E-wrap to a point, and then I do uh, flatten it to a point. So that it has a variation between the bottom half and the top with a garter stitch finish, okay? And while I will be using my X-Loom, the thing to keep in mind is you'll need a loom with at least 108 stitches on, okay? So, in a 5 8 inch gauge. So if you have the S loom or any loom that has at least 108 stitches on it, that's what you're going to need. So you don't have to have the X loom for this. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're, we work from bottom to top. I'm using a Caron cake for this, and I've kind of used half of it to do one half. And um, what we'll be doing is we'll be sewing it together. Okay at the end. Um, I personally like to add my stuff back as I'm working on it rather than sewing it, um, but that can be frustrating for some and not as easy and this is really not a bad pattern to do. So I'm just going to kind of show you how to do the one panel so that you can make two panels and sew them together. Okay, we're ready to cast on, and I don't know that I mentioned it yet, but this mesh lace stitch is coming from Renee Van Hoy's stick, one of her stitch dictionaries. I can't remember if it was the first one or the second one. I'll find out, and I'll put it in the uh, info box below so that you can get the book. The stitch dictionaries are fantastic books to go off of if you want to try a new stitch with a fun project and that kind of thing. Okay, so... To get started, what we want to do is you can do whatever E-wrap choice you want. I'm just going to do an E-wrap cast on. Okay, all the way around. And this is going to be knit flat, so keep that in mind. Okay, we have e-wrapped our way around, and now our first row is going to be a knit, and then we will be starting our um, stitch pattern, okay? So what you want to do is you want to just knit your way around, okay? We will be working back and forth. Make sure that you don't connect these areas here, okay? So what you'll do is you'll pause the video and you'll complete your knit around all the way. And then we'll be ready to start our stitch pattern, okay? Just pause the video, get your first row of knit done, and then I'll start showing you the more open version of the mesh lace stitch with just a single, every other peg is emptied with a decrease, okay, and then um, we'll do three sets of that, okay, and then I'll show you how to do um, decreasing, so pause the video, get your first row of knit done, and then we'll come back, and I will continue on from there, okay. Now that we are done with that, what we want to do is we want to start doing our decreasing. And what you want to do is you want to slip that first stitch. And you want to E-wrap, toss over, take that stitch, move it over to the next, and knit the bottom loop over. Then you want to E-wrap that next stitch, toss the bottom loop over, Lift it, move it over to the next peg, toss the bottom loop over, e wrap, pick it up, take it over, toss the bottom loop over. You're going to do this all the way around. 
your wrap, toss it over, pick it up, move it to the next stitch, and toss the bottom loop over. Move to the next peg, alright, e wrap, toss the bottom loop over, lift it, move it to the next peg, and toss the bottom loop over. Do this all the way around, which means every other peg should be empty, making sure that once you get down to the here, what you want to do is once you decrease over, you want to make sure that this stitch is always a knit, alright? Always a knit, and you're always going to slip the first stitch, okay? Because what you want to do is create this lovely chain you can work from to make it easier to sew up, okay? Let's go ahead, pause the video, get your decreasing done all the way around, and then we'll be ready to show you how to do the yarn over section, and then... Um, we'll go from there. So this is row one of a four row repeat and then I'll show you row two, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and get the decrease done and then I will show you row two. Okay, now we're to row two of our four row set and we should have just erupt that last one and what we want to do now is we want to slip that first stitch and we want to purl one yarn over which is where you just lay the working yarn over the empty peg and purl the next stitch yarn over and purl the next stitch you're going to do this all the way around okay so pause the video and complete row two and when you get to this peg here knit it you can purl all the rest of them, but you want to knit this last peg over here, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video. Get yourself your purl yarn over all the way around and knit your last stitch. Okay, now we are on row three of our four row set. And what we're going to do is we're going to slip that first stitch right here. And we're going to e-wrap our way all the way around. Alright. And this is going to be row three of our four row set. Okay. Let's go ahead and pause the video and e wrap your way all the way around. And then I will show you row four. And then you will repeat this two more times for a total of three sets. And then I'll show you how to start decreasing and working the actual mesh lace stitch. Okay, we're now on row four of our four row set. And what we want to do now is we want to slip that first stitch. And we want to just purl our way all the way around. Okay. So you're just going to purl all the way around. And make sure that you e-wrap or knit that last stitch. Okay, just make sure that it's always some sort of a knit stitch. Okay. So go ahead and pause the video and purl your way around, complete the set, then do two more sets of the four row repeat and then we'll come back and start doing our decreasing and start doing the actual mesh lace stitch rather than the variation of it, okay? Okay, we finished our set of three, as you can see, one, two, and three. Alright, now next we want to decrease on sides. So what I like to do is I like to lift this up and hold it on this side. Then I want to take this here, the stitch here, and move it over to the next peg. And then place that stitch I'm holding back on the end. And what that does is it keeps that nice chain going on the ends. Okay. Now I'm not going to do quite the same thing over here. Um, but what I am going to do is instead of doing the decrease like I normally do here, I'm going to actually knit it. And we're going to actually start doing the 
mesh stitch properly okay so we want to e-wrap and e-wrap okay we'll e-wrap one more time let's go ahead and e-wrap three and then what I like to do after I've done that because um, you'll decrease on this end but what I like to do is go ahead and be able to decrease I'm gonna go ahead and decrease here there so you're gonna e-wrap and what you want to do is you kind of want to keep up with where you're at. And so, like, there's a hole there. So, once you e-wrap that third one, so you say you e-wrap one, you slip the first stitch. And you e-wrap one, two, and three. Well, once you e-wrap that third one, you're going to lift that up. You're going to put that over. And you're going to toss it. Now, you're going to go back and you're going to knit one. Okay. So, slip the first stitch, knit three. One, two, three. Now, I like to go ahead and decrease. Or you can decrease when you actually get over here, or you can decrease at the beginning of a row. But you have to keep in mind you're wanting to decrease that. So, you are going to want to at least then knit over the two. Then, what you want to do is you want to knit that one, which e wrap, then move it over and toss the bottom loop over, and then knit one. And then you're going to e wrap. Toss bottom loop over and then e wrap one. Okay, then you're going to e wrap one, toss bottom loop over, move it over, toss bottom loop, and e wrap. Now I'm going to write the um, pattern up for this as a K slash K and that's where you knit it and then you move it over and then you knit it on the next peg okay so then you're going to e-wrap again move it over toss the bottom lip over I'm going to try to keep this in once you start getting messing with these bigger looms it makes it more difficult and then you're going to e-wrap year again so basically what you should have is every third peg should be empty okay so every third peg should be empty so look at this you have empty two empty two empty and you want to continue this patterning all the way around to the other side okay and then when you get over to this decrease area, I'll start filming again. Okay. So what you want to do is go ahead and pause the video, get your decreases done in this row. And when you get over to here, after we've already shown our decrease, we're going to stop and I'm going to show you what um, to do over here. Okay. Let's go ahead and pause the video, get that much done, and we'll come back and start on our second row. Okay. So, we're now down to our last two, and so you can see your decreases there. What you want to do is you want to e-wrap, knit those two together on that decrease, and then knit that last peg. Alright. So, now the next thing you want to do on your second row on this is you want to go in and you want to slip that first stitch, purl, Curl, yarn over, curl, curl, yarn over. You want to do this all the way around, and then you want to pause when you get to over here. Okay, you get to your decrease. And I'll show you how to do that one, okay? Let's go ahead and, and purl your way around with the yarn over on your empty pegs. And then when we get over here, I'll show you how to finish up these last three stitches on the other side. Okay, so we're down to our last three. You're going to yarn over, and you're actually going to purl those two together, okay? And then you're going to ear up that last stitch. Alright, now, 
The next two rows are actually really easy. You don't have to worry about the decreasing section, okay? So what you want to do for rows 3 and 4 of this new set, okay, is you want to e-wrap around and then purl back the other direction, alright? So, for row 3, slip that first stitch and e-wrap. So you're going to e-wrap your way over to the other side. Alright, so this is row 3. And you're going to repeat the set that we just did without the decreasing. Um, and do the set one more time and then we'll start decreasing with every set and still doing the e-wrap and everything. So I've got some general notes written out for this, but um, go ahead and pause the video, e-wrap your way around, then I'll show you the beginning of row four and then um, I'll show you how to start the repeat so that you aren't having to worry about the decreases because you're going to do a whole other set without a decrease and then um, you'll go in and start decreasing with every set, so I'll show you how to do that too. And you might need to get a stitch marker and um, have that be able to put on the pegs. Reason being is you want to be able to easily see where your decrease is when you start moving and decreasing over here so that you can consistently keep with a string line going, okay? So as you can see, it's a straight line going up and you want that to continue so you'll need a stitch marker here soon all right so go ahead and e-wrap and if you know what you know what i'm talking about make sure that you slip the first stitch purl your way around and make sure you e-wrap that last stitch if you feel comfortable with what you're doing if not e-wrap around and then i'll show you row four all right we're completing row four of this four row pattern and what we're going to do is we're going to slip that first stitch and we're going to purl our way around. So you're going to purl your way all the way around. Okay. So pause the video and purl your way around. And remember to e wrap this last stitch. Alright. And then I'll get you started on doing another set. Alright, so pause the video, crawl your way around, and then we'll come back and get started with the next section. Okay, we're going to do a set that doesn't have a decrease to it. Alright, um, and what that means is we're going to slip this first stitch, we're going to e-route the next stitch, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to start our decreasing. So we're going to e wrap take that stitch, move it over to the next one, and toss the bottom lip over, and e-wrap. Okay, so that's how you set up to start the decrease. And you're going to e-wrap, move over, e-wrap, and then e-wrap. Okay, so you're going to do that all the way around. And this should be your last decrease here that goes, uh, let's see your last decrease. Now you're just going to e-wrap, I believe, these last two here. Alright, so you're just going to e-wrap these last two. Now, the set works the same. When you go back the other direction, slip the first stitch and then purl every stitch and yarn over every empty peg. Just like we've been doing. And then you're going to be e-wrapping this last stitch when you come over. Slip the first stitch, e-wrap your way around, slip the first stitch, purl your way around, okay? So, we're going to repeat basically what we just did without the decreasing. So, I got you started here. So, you're going to decrease. Then, you're going to do your purl yarn over, going your way back. Then, you're going to e-wrap. Then, you're going to purl. And when we come back, we'll be ready to start the next section, okay? So pause the video, complete the next four rows on this set. So start by decreasing, then doing your purl yarn over, then doing an e-wrap row, and then doing a purl row. And when we come back, we'll start the next section where we're going to be decreasing with every single set. And we're still going to be e-wrapping. 
Okay, at this point we are ready to start decreasing with every set. And we're going to be still doing an E-wrap and um, everything. So, this is where you'll need your stitch marker because you're always decreasing on this side. You just need to know where your first decrease is going to be, okay? So, um, we know that our last one was starting with this peg. But we're going to be decreasing. So, we're going to be getting to a point where we can't use that one as a decrease. Okay, so we need to find where our next one is. Okay, and if we look inside our loom, this peg should be our next one, okay? Let's see if I can get it to focus in, okay? This peg should be our next one, okay? So, what we want to do is we want to be able to go in and mark it, okay? So, we're going to mark it. That's going to be our first decrease. Well, that looks like several. If you're decreasing every row, you'd be surprised at how fast you're going to, um, every set, you'd just be surprised at how fast you're going to run up into that. And the thing to keep in mind is, if you're going to be decreasing, like for instance, our first decrease is actually going to encroach upon this one. So when we go in, we're going we're gonna to be decreasing from here. And so we don't want it there, so we want it over here. And the next one will be here and here, and then you're gonna you're gonna follow the step of move it over to the next one if you know your set is fixing to decrease upon your first decrease you do for your stitch patterning. Okay, and it's the same thing to keep in mind over here. But what I like to do is before I even start a row like this, I like to go over here and go ahead and decrease so that I don't even have to worry about it when I get over here okay so as you can see I lift that up hold it move that next stitch over one and then place that back so we can continue to have the chain so that decrease is like is the same every time okay so what we'll want to do and you'll find I like to set up my de my decreases on the end pretty quickly and so I don't have to sit there and worry about whether I moved them or not okay so what I want to do is I want to e-wrap, slip that first stitch, and e-wrap, and e-wrap, all the way over. So I'm going to e-wrap, slip that first stitch, and I'm going to e-wrap four. Then I'm going to e-wrap, move that stitch over, toss the bottom loop over. Then this is where I'm going to start my stitch patterning. E-wrap, e-wrap, pick the stitch up, put the stitch over one stitch, Toss the bottom loop over and ear up one. All right, you can do that all the way around. Now, so that you don't forget, and you want to go ahead and set your decrease up for the next row around, you're going to lift that stitch up, lift this stitch up, move this stitch over one, and then place that end stitch back. Okay, so that way your decrease is already set up. You don't have to worry about it when you come back around. All right. At this point, you'll want to pause the video and do your stitch patterning all the way around. And um, I will show you the last few stitches in this over here. Um, this side can get questionable at times, but I don't find it's too difficult. Um, if you want to just keep continuing to make sure that you're at least um, e-wrapping the last three and that kind of thing. but. Um, I'll show you how to handle this side over here. Go ahead and pause the video and get your decreasing section done on this side. And then um, I will show you what to do next. Okay, you have a couple of choices. As you can see, you're to a point where you would decrease over. You, know, you can choose not to. That's fine. Um, because you did a similar thing over here. So you can choose to just e-wrap and then e-wrap the two together and then e-wrap. That way you can keep it even on both sides since we've had to cut that back, okay? So um, now that you have that done, you've gone in and you've done that decrease and then 
you e wrapped and then you're going to e wrap one, e wrap two together, and e wrap the last one. Alright, now what you want to do next is simple. You just go in and you do what you've been doing. You slip that first stitch and then you purl your way around and you yarn over those empty pegs. You do that all the way around and then you're going to purl these two together and then e wrap that last stitch, okay? And that takes care of your decrease, okay? Then you're going to e wrap your way around, purl your way around with no decrease involved, just like we've been doing. You're continuing with the stitch pattern. The trick is keeping up with your decreasing, okay? So you decrease at the beginning of every set, just like we did where you plan in where your decrease is, okay? So, you know, my decrease starter is here, okay? And if you want to mark your decrease ender, you can, um, but I find it's not as necessary. So, while we've moved in here, it'll be a couple before we actually start landing a decrease on this one. But keep in mind, if you find you're fixing to land a decrease on this one, you're going to need to move it over to your next section that you're going to be decreasing with, okay? Just like you saw me do here. So, you, I knew I was fixing to encroach upon that first decrease. So, I moved the next one over, okay? Before I even started the set. And knowing that I'm going to not decrease that one um, the first time around on that. So, you're going to follow that patterning when you know you're fixing, because you always want to keep in mind what your last three stitches are. When you're fixing to start a decrease section, you want to keep in mind where your last three stitches are. And if those last three stitches are going to land on a decrease peg like this, then you know you need to move your decrease stitch marker over to the next one, okay? So, um, you're going to keep repeating this over and over for a total of seven sets where you're decreasing um, at the beginning of each set. Alright, so when I get ready to start my decrease section um, on my first row, where I'm decreasing every third peg, that's when you want to set up your decrease over here, your end decrease. Then I do a few stitches and I like to go ahead and set up my end decrease here. But the first two rows of each set will have a decrease on the end, so that you're slowly and gradually working your way in. Okay. As you can see, all right. So we've done through here, all right. And now we're working on. And then we've done this section, and now we're working on this section. Okay. So. And then we work on this section. All right. So what you want to do, and I'm gonna let you run with it at this point. You're going to pause the video and you're going to complete seven sets while decreasing the end and keeping up with your stitch patterning. And then we'll come back and we'll work our next section where we go from e-wrapping this set to start flat knitting this set. Um, the four row set. Okay, and then we're going to do that same thing that we've just been doing for another seven sets. But instead of e-wrapping, we're going to be flat knitting. And I'll explain that. And then it's going to switch up again, okay? And um, I'll explain that, all right? But for now, go ahead and complete seven sets where you're decreasing at the very beginning of the first two rows of each set on the end while continuing with the stitch patterning. And that's continuing with e-wrap. And when we come back, I'll show you that we're going to start flat knitting instead of e-wrapping. Okay, and we're gonna, then we're going to do the same thing for another seven sets. Alright, and then it switches up to where it's every single row is just going to be a decrease. Okay. So, pause the video. We've just done one, we've just started a set. But you want to do seven total sets. Okay. And then we'll come back and do the next section. Okay, so pause the video, get that much done. And we'll come back and work the next section. Um, I ran into a fruit paw in my notes that was humongous. <laughs> it 
if you wanted to do it this way you could like if you wanted to do it the original way that I had where you continue and you just switch over from e-wrap to flat knit doing the decrease with um, with a decrease on each side with each set you can and then do a decrease every row you can it'll make it a little longer okay it's not that it's a bad thing it's that the yarn I have is only enough to do what I have right here okay but if you have a lot more yarn let's say you have two skeins of the um, Caron cakes make it longer okay it, it will work out just fine it's it, it'll add length if you wanted to do how I originally wanted to do okay but it's not gonna work with the amount of yarn I have left and so I had done a massive miscalculation because it was only supposed to be decrease with them um, in each side with every set for a total of seven okay and now we're supposed to be decreasing every row which is this section here okay and then we're gonna have the last um, few decreases done with the garter stitch all right so I'm going to show you how to start decreasing with every row to get you started you're continuing this stitch patterning through the whole thing and my suggestion to you is before you start the row to go in and move all the stitches around like you've been doing you're going to keep decreasing and, and like you've been doing on both sides and keeping up with your part where you're actually going to move the decrease you're going to keep doing that like you've been doing you're just doing it with every row okay and i'm going to show you how to continue doing that while working with every row okay i seem to have forgotten my hook so um i can come back and get started okay i've already decreased on this side and what i'm going to do is continue what i'm doing so i'm going to knit slip the first stitch knit knit then of course knit that one move it over knit the bottom one over then knit knit that one move it over knit the bottom one over like we've been doing and knit. you're going to do that all the way around and when you get to the other side i'll show you how to finish up the row okay so continue your stitch pattern all the way around and i'll show you how to finish up the row and start the next section okay so we're down to our last set here so what we're going to do is we're going to knit move that one over and we want to knit that bottom one over then we want to knit two together and knit one okay now we're ready to purl our way back okay before we do my suggestion would be to decrease over here remember you lift your last two stitches place that one on top of that one and that one on the last one and the reason being is you want a nice clean chain on the sides that you can sew up later okay yeah nice clean chains on the side that you can sew up later all right okay so now what you want to do is like you've been doing so this is kind of normal like you've been doing all right and what you want to do is you want to purl your way back okay so you naturally slip that first stitch and you start purling your way back and yarn over the empty pegs okay so there's your yarn over and yarn over the empty peg okay so do that all the way around and then remember to purl this two together and knit this one and then i'll show you how to do 
the next step where you're just decreasing every single row, okay? So this is bone like it normally is, except you're flat knitting, okay? And at this point, um, I believe you're going to do seven more sets decreasing, okay? So you're going to do seven more sets decreasing. And then you should have some left over to do your garter stitch, all right? There's your garter stitch right there, and you're going to be decreasing while you're doing the garter stitch, okay? Alright, so, go ahead and pause the video, get your purl done, and we'll start here, where it's time to purl the two together. This, obviously, is going to need to be moved, because I'm going to be decreasing again. So, I'm going to go ahead and move that over to the next empty slot. You may find that's the easiest way to do it. Okay, because when you start decreasing fast like this, you're going to be moving this thing a lot more, and you'll need to keep up with where you're at. So you may need to move it every time you um, have it empty, so you see where you're at. Okay, all right, so pause the video, get that much done, and we'll start from the next section. Okay, we're here to our last little section. We're going to yarn over, purl two together and knit one okay now we're going to go over here and over here we're going to decrease over here okay we're going to slip that one and then we're just going to knit our way around okay so we're knit all the way around knit two together knit one then you're going to decrease over here, okay? Then you're going to purl your way around, purl the two together, and knit one, all right? You're going to continue the stitch pattern. You're just decreasing with every single row. And what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing that for seven sets, okay? So when we finish this, that'll be one set, okay? So you're going to complete seven more sets, all right? Then we should be ready for doing the garter stitch. And then you're just going to keep decreasing on the garter stitch, as you can see here. All right. Okay, so pause the video. And basically what you want to do is we're going to be trying to finish it up here. So... What you're wanting to do is you want to have at least five more decreases available to do the garter stitch. And so you're going to be decreasing after we've just decreased one here. So we have the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Um, basically you're going to do 14 is what you're doing. So you're, you're doing a full... Um, seven sets okay so you want to do seven sets and when we come back we will go in and we'll do our garter stitch okay so you basically are wanting to decrease um, 14 stitches at this point which should be a total of seven sets okay so pause the video and complete that much on your decreasing every single row keeping up with where your little marker is and you'll need to move it more regularly but your your object is we're trying to decrease down to here okay and um, we are almost done with showing you how to do your first your first panel and you'll end up needing to make a second panel okay so go ahead and pause the video get your decreasing done to where you should have five left to do the garter stitch and then we should be able to go from there, okay? Okay, we're now down to the last part of this pattern. We're down to the garter stitch area. And we are still decreasing while we're doing the garter stitch, as you can see here. Okay, and here is sorry, what I have. Okay. And what you should have 
is um, you should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. You should have 23 empty here. And then you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. And 23 empty over here. Alright. And so at this point, what you're ready to do is you're ready to go in and do your garter stitch. And decrease like you normally would. Okay. So what you want to do is you want to come over here you start the row because this is going to be a knit row you're going to go ahead and you're going to decrease so on the written pattern what you're going to see is you're going to see a decrease in the arrow direction you're going to decrease in knit two together and then move the stitch and knit it okay what that means is you're moving it to where it's right beside your stitches again to knit it okay that's if you didn't lift like I do all right so that's what that means okay and as you can see we're getting about down this is only one caron cake this is not a cupcake this is an actual cake and at this rate with the few garter stitch rows that I have and then I have that yellow in there that I'm going to get to um, between sewing up and everything it should only take one cake, Caron cake, to make this project, okay, and in the pattern I will tell you how much approximately I use to make this, um, but if you have a regular um, 5 8 inch gauge with approximately 108 pegs, you can make this project if you don't have the x loom, okay, since we didn't use any of the wedges. Alright, so at this point, what you want to do is just like we've been doing with our decreasing on the ends you're just going to go in and knit your way around okay so this row is going to be a knit and because your last two rows of your set is a knit purl um, it adds to it so you've already basically started your garter stitch so you're just going to continue doing like you are doing with the last two rows of your set and you're going to do that till you are down one two three four so you're going to do that for a total of four rows I believe what you want to get down to, I believe it's 54 pegs, 54 stitches, yeah, I'm pretty sure what you're trying to do is get down to 54 stitches, okay, and if you're wanting to know how much is on a section, you go over here and you count it, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 20, 6, 27, and of course you add 27 over here, because what we're trying to do is just get to where you have only two prongs left. Alright, but um, because the starting peg is not quite just let, uh, it's not right of, it's uh, very middle, it's going to be off a little bit on this side, it's probably going to decrease a little bit more on this side, okay, than it would on this side. So basically, yeah, what you're doing is you're going to decrease it down to here, all right, um, to where you have 54 stitches, okay. So just keep that in mind, you're trying to get to 54 stitches, so you're not going to do this that many times, all right. Um, so you're just going to decrease in, in doing a row of knit. And then you're going to decrease over here and then do a row of purl. And you're going to do that to where you have 54 stitches. Which should only be a couple of times. Okay. So you may be doing it only like three times. 
and be finishing with a knit so that you're ready to bind off. But what you want to do is get to um, 54 stitches, bind off, and then we're ready to sew up. Okay, but you're basically doing the same thing you've been doing on the second half of the stitch pattern where you're decreasing on this side, you're knitting your way around, and then you're going to decrease on this side, and then purl your way around, and you're going to do that in a garter stitch method, okay? So that we're ready to actually sew up the side, and then we will go from there. And so we're almost ready for this to be made together to where you can see the full pattern. Okay, I have finished my two halves and I've already sewn one half down as you can see and it looks really nice and even and there's a reason for that okay so what you want to do is fold it in half so you find a half side okay and then what you're going to do is you're going to follow the chains you're going to connect the chains side by side starting from the top because that's where you can get the most accuracy it's up through here you want to get your needle threaded fairly long i'm going to do my slip knot for that okay so you're just going to sew the sides up and what you're going to do is you're going to go and try to find the first chain and you're going to send the needle through and then I like to send the needle through my slip knot and then tighten okay now if you want to sew in these strands you can um, I'm going to shorten mine a little bit and sew them in okay and we're going to sew from top to bottom okay here's my sides you have all these chains on the side, okay? So what you want to do is you want to send it through the next set of chains like that. See? There's your next chains. See your next chains? Sorry, keeping the focus on. It's difficult. Okay. You want to be doing that all the way down, okay? Send those through there. Okay. Then you're going to find the next chain. Set of chains, which would be those. And you're going to send the needle through both those. See? You're going to send them through those. And you can put your edges that you're sewing in here. Okay. Then you're going to find your next set of chains, which is right here. And you're going to send it through that. Okay. Then you're going to hunt down your next set of chains and send the needle through. you see the old kind of sewn in the tails there. What you want to do is you want to continue this all the way down the garment. Okay. So much easier not having to work with a camera on the way. There we go. Okay. So you just want to keep continuing to follow the chain down and all the way down and then I usually do a few kind of loose and then I'll go in and tighten and then stretch and if before sewing you may want to go ahead and block your poncho okay me I'm going to actually press it because this is a rougher acrylic in my opinion 
and um, I want the drape to be a lot more floaty and so actually I'm going to press it with an iron I'm going to do the no-no and press it with an iron but that's what you can do with um, acrylic if it's kind of scratchy and everything pull and then pull okay so you're going to do that all the way down. You'll definitely need to block this because it is lace. And um, you'll sew down both sides. And then that's it. Um, you'll tie it off and then you'll want to weave in your ends. And then that is how you make the you can wear it a couple of different ways you can wear it this way or you can do the fold in half and wear it more this way where there's a V down the front okay um, if you make it with a solid yarn you can definitely do the V down the front nicely but I'm gonna press this so it's gonna actually be quite a bit longer okay but um, I used a single cake of Caron cakes not cupcakes but cakes and um, it made this project okay so that is how you make a mesh lace stitch poncho